Alright, so continuing on our look at the Crash games released for the PlayStation 2, we now have Crash Twin Sanity. From what I can tell, the developers, Traveler's Tales, wanted to take the series in a different direction in the gameplay, to be a more open world style, since at the time, those type of games were rather successful. I have seen this game at stores before, and even being playable at some furniture store for, uh, some reason, but I don't really remember much advertising for Twin Sanity. But hey, I quite like more open world 3D platformers, so I was willing to give this game a try. Let's see if Crash to Insanity is worth playing or not. To begin things off, we have the story which takes place after the ending of Crash Wrath of Cortex. Frozen in a block of ice drifting in the ocean, we find Cortex, who eventually ends up on Crash's home island. With no hesitation, Cortex quickly starts scheming of ways to get back at Crash. So, to get the ball rolling, Cortex knocks out Coco and horribly disguises himself as her. Thankfully for him, Crash is as stupid as he was in the second game and blindly follows him. Turns out, Cortex leads Crash to a special party with all of Crash's past villains, who are ready to kill him. After a battle, Crash and Cortex end up falling down a hole together, in which they start meeting strange aliens. They learn that these alien-like creatures come from another dimension, led by two weird twins who plan on destroying the islands. This ends up forcing Cortex and Crash to have to team up and work with each other to put an end to the twins. Personally, I really like this setup. It starts off with a fun idea of the past villains joining together to defeat Crash and turns into a team up between Crash and Cortex. The concept of arch villains having to team up with each other isn't anything new, but for a platforming series like this, it's a nice refreshing way to approach the games. It also helps that the story remains simple and focused as the game goes on and has a few other fun ideas. My favorite of these being that all the other villains become very antagonistic towards Cortex, making him have to go against those he once worked with. The characters themselves are pretty fun. Thankfully, Crash never actually speaks and remains just as brain dead and oblivious as he was in Crash 2. To me, there's something charming about his simplicity, which is helped by his upbeat demeanor. Cortex is also very entertaining. He's always willing to do something underhanded and devious if it means it helps helps him moving forward to his own goals. He's also the butt of many jokes, making him more of a comedic villain. My personal favorite jokes are when he solves problems by acting violently. It's a nice contrast to his technical skills. Speaking of the humor, I do find this game to be generally funny. Sure, not every joke hits and some kinda suck, but for the most part, I find it all to be very tolerable and entertaining. We also get a new character, Nina, who's Cortex's niece. She doesn't have too much in terms of personality, she's pretty much a little girl who enjoys doing villainous things, which for me is at least still entertaining. I actually like how much Cortex kinda cares about her, since it's hinted that she could in fact be his daughter, which brings out more of a fatherly side of him that's really charming. Though I have no idea who Cortex would have had Nina with, and I don't think I really want to know. All the side characters have some decent personalities and are mostly characters from previous games. None of them really stand out all too much, but they also don't get too bothersome either. The game's ending is alright, we have a decent backstory for the twins and a reason as to why they're attacking. It closes things well, but nothing all that important or impacting really happens. In the end, it's a pretty entertaining story, mostly due to our two main leads. Gameplay-wise, Crash to Insanity is a 3D platformer. Throughout the game, you will play as three different characters, Crash, Cortex, and very rarely, Nina. We'll start things off with our main character, Crash, as you'll be playing him throughout most of the game. The game begins with Crash on Wampa Island, where you'll learn the basics of the controls, like double jumping, crouching, and Crash's signature spin attack. For the most part, the progression is pretty simple, as you make your way throughout these islands from one platforming section to the next. Between some of these platforming sections, segments, you can explore small parts of the islands that will have some challenges or puzzles, I guess, that will reward you with gems. These colorful gems really aren't that important as they're all optional and only unlock artwork and extra things like that. While these islands are technically open world, the progression is very linear, which I don't mind at all, as that helps keep the gameplay 
way more focused. I suppose now I should talk about the playable characters since I did bring them up at the beginning of this segment. Most of the time you will be playing as Crash alone, where you'll have to get past some of these very well laid out 3D platforming sections. The platforming, by the way, feels really good thanks to some responsive controls and a fair amount of challenge. Yes, this game is pretty difficult and you will die a lot. But once you start getting the feel of the game and a level, then the extra challenge, to me anyway, really helps getting you into some top platforming moods. Unfortunately, there is a live system to the game, and if you lose all your lives, you'll have to start back at certain checkpoints found throughout the islands, which thankfully are well placed in reasonable locations. Also, the game really isn't too difficult, at least not until you get to the very last crash section. But anywho, every time you come back to life, you'll be given an Aku Aku mask, who will take take damage for you. You can collect more Aku Aku masks to resist more damage by breaking certain crates, but most crates will have Wampa Fruit in them which will give you extra lives if you collect enough of them, though you'll have to be careful to avoid TNT and Nitro crates. So what are the other gameplay styles? Well there are times when Crash and Cortex will have to team up with each other, like these ball rolling sections which are just okay. I'm not really a huge fan of these sections, but there's so few of them that they never get in the way. There are three main ways these two will team up. First, there are moments when Crash will be dragging Cortex around and you'll need to throw Cortex at levers and over pipes to get through these sections. If you throw Cortex in the wrong area or accidentally off a cliff, he'll thankfully warp right back to Crash, though sometimes he can die so still try to be careful. These sections aren't too bad and add some decent problem solving. Really the camera is the biggest issue as at times it's not a very cooperative camera and can lead to many annoying deaths due to poor angles. Secondly, there are moments when Cortex is running and you'll need to get rid of obstacles in his way. To me, these are decent, fast-paced challenges that never get too difficult. Lastly, there are sliding sections where Crash will be using Cortex as a board to slide down large hills. Sliding down these hills are just okay, but I do have a couple of nitpicks. My first issue is that controls are just a bit off here and jumping isn't as responsive as I wish it was, which has led to some frustrating deaths before. My next issue is that I just personally find these levels to go on for far too long for my own taste. I'd much rather be platforming than sliding. On very few occasions, you will be playing as Cortex alone, who isn't a very platforming character. Instead, his gameplay consists of running around and shooting at enemies. Once again, playing as Cortex is just okay. His segments aren't really that hard, but I don't find them to be all that interesting. On even more rare occasions, you will play as Nina. Nina is a much slower version of Crash with one major difference. She has extendable arms. Arms. Her arms allow her to shoot them out like hook shots to swing across platforms. Personally, I enjoy her levels more than Cortex's since they're still focused on platforming with a slight twist that works well enough. You just don't get to play as her hardly ever. Lastly, we have boss fights, which are for the most part pretty great. They offer up a decent challenge and usually aren't too difficult to figure out and how to beat them. Some of the bosses even have a nice imposing presence to them. Not only that, but the final boss is quite a treat and is both enjoyable and challenging. The game has a great cartoon art style that is complemented with colorful islands and characters combined with nice and fast animations that are quite expressive. Though Crash doesn't talk, you can still get a great idea of what little is going on in his empty mind thanks to great facial expressions. Cortex also has good facial expressions that help add to some of the comedy. I absolutely love the look of these levels, with my personal favorite being the Ice Island, with its mix of ice and machinery. I love the idea of the School of Evil Island, but I don't enjoy it as much as I would like to, because you don't get to play as Crash very much here, and there's also a rather annoying section here too that that does involve Crash. If there's one thing I'd really like to mention, it'd be the cutscenes. They aren't bad, but there's often a lack of sound effects during the in-game cutscenes that just makes things very unintentionally awkward. There are new voices for some of the characters as well, like Cortex, who is now voiced by Lex Lang, who does a pretty good job. The voice acting all around isn't too bad and works very well. Then we have the music, which is quite the standout, mostly because most of it is acapella music. For those of you who don't know, acapella is music made from people creating the sounds and beats with their mouths. 
Worlds. Not only is this music unique for a Crash game, but it's also really good and is easily my favorite soundtrack in the series. There are plenty of catchy, upbeat, and memorable tunes like Insanity Island, Totem God, Slipslide Ice Capade, and Twin Sanity Island. You'll find yourself humming along to all of these. It's definitely a soundtrack worth listening to. So, would I recommend Crash to Insanity? Yes, I would, especially if you're a fan of 3D platformers. Don't get me wrong, this game does have its flaws. The camera isn't always very cooperative, some of the level sections and gameplay mechanics aren't that great, and collecting the other colored gems really isn't worth it. But the good is very good. Very catchy and memorable music, entertaining boss fights, and challenging but mostly fair and consistent platforming. Sure, like I said before, you'll die a lot, but this isn't a very long game and it can be beaten in under 10 hours. I think this was a great twist on the Crash series and feels like it's heading in the right direction. Heck, the developers had some extra and possibly questionable original ideas for the game, taking place in more of a sci-fi environment, though personally I would have really liked to have seen a level that was a dried up ocean like they were originally considering doing. Even if you're not a huge fan of the older Crash games like myself, it's still a solid platforming experience and is a game I find myself going back to from time to time. With this different kind of outlook for the series, we'll be seeing how things go next time.